Hello, everyone. I am Yichun Yu from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Um, today, I'm glad to share our recent work on cellulose function orchestration. So let's start. Uh, cellulose computing with its function as a service offering is becoming increasingly popular in the cloud. It relieves cloud users from managing servers. Uh, instead, the service cloud can handle the resource provisioning and uh, enable auto-scaling. Well, the cloud users are only charged in a fine-grained pay-per-use manner. Um, for, uh, for example, the developer can deploy their application as a set of interacting functions and define the events that can trigger their execution. Once the service platform receives the events, it will invoke the functions and scale the number of function instances to handle the dynamic workloads. Current service platforms deploy and orchestrate functions as a workflow. Um, for example, uh, the interacting function of an application can be expressed as a workflow DAG. In a DAG, the node represents functions and the edges represent the invocation dependencies. So the platform can simply perform the function-oriented orchestration. That is, they can, they can drive the workflow execution following the function invocation order. Um, here, the, this finger shows a simple example. Assuming there are image processing application, there are two sequential functions, the image preprocessing and recognition. Once the platform receives an event of the image, it will trigger the processing functions to get the intermediate results and then invoke the recognition function to output the final results. Well, this, uh, today, well, this function oriented abstraction is pretty effective for the simple scenarios. Uh, we found it is uh, it has three limitations that can make it neither easy to use nor efficient. Next, we will go through the three limitations one by one. The first is the limited expressiveness. We found that this current function oriented abstraction cannot express many complicated function invocation patterns, while the data flow does not exactly match the function invocation. Let's take an example of MapReduce. Uh, which is the classical operation in data analytics. In MapReduce, as we know, it needs a fine-grained all-to-all data shuffle between the members and reducers. When running in the serverless platform, we, uh, the current orchestration service can only trigger the mapper function and reduce functions, but cannot handle such fine-grained data exchange. As a result, the developers typically need to manually handle the data shuffle probably via an external story. The second limitation is the usability. Um, we found current uh, service plan is not easy to use for exchange data, for exchanging data between functions. Uh, as we know, the uh, service function are typically stateless without direct communications. This, force, this forces users to explore many other data exchange options. For example, uh, the users may exchange data via orchestration service, or they can call a function from another, or they can rely on external storage like S3 and Redis. However, um, there's no single option you can always have the best performance. To illustrate this, we conduct experiments on, in, on AWS Lambda. We measure the latency of transferring the data between two Lambda instances. Here, we include the four options of data exchange. The first is a set functions, which is a common orchestration service. And we can also trigger the function from S3. And Lambda here means the nested function call. We also include Redis for fast data sharing. So for fast data sharing, as you can see from the table, uh, from the finger, um, there's no single option can have always best performance for all the data science. Uh, given that the data volume exchanged in real world applications can be dynamic and even unpredictable. So it's, it's very challenging for users to select the optimal data exchange options. And this has also been observed in previous studies. The, the last limitation is the affiliability. Um, we, we noticed that the current orchestration service can have a long invocation delay. For example, in our measurement, the uh, in AWS that functions, it takes over 10 milliseconds to invoke a one instance. For a workflow consisting of multiple functions, it will take even longer. Um, on the other hand, many online services can have stringent latency requirements. 
um, for example, some uh, tens of milliseconds, which you can see is the same order of the magnitude compared with the invocation delay. And also the current uh, arbitration service is inefficient to exchange large amount of data as we have shown in the previous finger. Uh, it's mainly because it's lack of data locality. Yeah. So in summary, uh, we, we found the current orchestration service is not applicable to latency critical and data intensive applications. So we have discussed the three limitations in today's function orchestration. Um, in comparison, we propose um, the, the properties of a designed function orchestration. There are three design properties. The first is the rich expressiveness, that is, the serverless orchestration service should allow developers to easily express a rich side of workflow patterns. And the second is the high usability. Users don't need to separately handle the data exchange in addition to the function invocations. And also the wide applicability, um, the orchestration service or the service platform should be applicable to both latency critical and data intensive applications. Yeah. Uh, to achieve these three goals, we are wondering why current function RNK architecture is neither easy to use nor efficient. Um, our answer is it is agnostic to intermediate data. First, because uh, the, uh, it is unaware of how and when the data should be consumed in a workflow, so they can allow the developers to express the fine-grained data exchange patterns. Also, it is, a, um, it is unaware of data locality. Uh, it's not designed for fast data sharing. Motivated by these observations, we propose that a designed function orchestration should be data-centric. Uh, that is, uh, first, we need to make the data consumption explicit so that the users can uh, easily express and allow them to express the fine grained data exchange. And also, we should enhance data locality uh, to ensure the fast workflow execution. Following this insight, we propose the data centric function orchestration. We notice that the intermediate data in a workflow execution are typically short lived and immutable. That is, once they are generated, they just wait to be consumed by the downstream functions. Um, so we uh, in data center orchestration, we let the intermediate data trigger the functions. In particular, we have a abstraction called data bucket, which is for storing and managing intermediate data. And the users can uh, specify how and when the data bucket should trigger the functions. And that is that they can specify the trigger conditions. And during the execution, the data bucket can trigger the function once the conditions met, and the uh, a service workflow can consist of multiple data buckets, and all the data buckets can work together to drive the workflow execution. Since the intermediate data are immutable, so there's no consistent EC. And we conclude that uh, we, uh, we show that the data centric design can meet all the desired properties. Uh, first, in terms of expressiveness, uh, we actually break the type coupling between the function invocation and the data flow. So it allows the developers to uh, express the fine grained data exchange. In terms of usability, by letting data trigger functions, we actually provide a unified interface for both function invocations and data exchange. That is, users don't need to choose from many data exchange options. They can just specify how data is invoked and we can do the a data exchange for them. Finally, is the uh, applicability. Uh, uh, we actually, uh, the data centric design actually exposes expo many fine grained knowledge of data function re relationships in dependencies. So, with such fine grained knowledge, we can, the service platform can have more opportunities to optimize the data locality so as, so as to achieve high performance. And next, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, how the data-centric design can benefit a real-world application. We provide a rich side of trigger primitives to let developers and let users 
to easily specify the trigger conditions under each data bucket. Uh, let's take an example the MapReduce again. Uh, in the MapReduce, we have a primitive called the dynamic group. Dynamic group trigger primitive can dynamically partition the data in the bucket into multiple groups and let each data group trigger the function. So this primitive is well suited for running the MapReduce. For example, the mappers can write the intermediate data into the bucket and the bucket can place the data objects in the right group based on their intended data reduce functions. So once all the mappers complete, um, the, the bucket can trigger the reduce functions and it let each reducer to, 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 to consume a group of data. And we have uh, built our uh, a service platform called Fairmony. Uh, Fairmony can support the data centric function orchestration. And this table compares the primitives of Fairmony and uh, AWS data functions. And the, we can see that the, for the common invocation patterns supported in staff functions can be can also be easily enabled in Fairmony. And what's more, Fairmony can support more complicated invocation patterns. In addition to the MapReduce, Fermi also provides the primitives like the by size and by time, which can support accumulating intermediate data for batch data processing. And it also supports, uh, provides the redundant primitive to enable the KLN invocation pattern. This is for like the redundant computation. And actually, in addition to the listed trigger primitive, we actually provide a, an abstracted interface so that the users, the developers can implement their customized primitives. In, in this way, the, uh, the family can easily, easily ensure the high, uh, the, the, the rich expressiveness. And here is a code snippet to show that the, the developers, the users can specify, can add the trick and, and can add the broadly triggers via our Python client. Okay, uh, next I'd like to show the system design of Firemony. Mm. Firemony uh, is run atop a Kubernetes cluster um, and it, it, it has two kinds of nodes, the coordinator and the worker. Uh, in each worker, we have we run a local scheduler and a number of function executor. We also have a local object store uh, in each worker node. And all the system components are deployed as a container. The family can also interact with a remote durable key value star. Um, to ensure, to, 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 uh, to provide a low invocation latency, uh, to ensure low invocation latency, the family we adopt a two-tier scheduling. Uh, that is uh, both schedulers and coordinators can track the uh, bucket status and make the invocation decisions. Um, by running a, a scheduler in each worker node, we actually can evoke functions as locally as possible. For a large workflow running across multiple workers, the, uh, the coordinator can gather the bucket status and the, they can schedule the, the, the request of the downstream function to workers with most data objects in order to ensure, a high, to, ensure to, to enhance the data liquidity. And the coordinators are sharded to ensure the high scalability. And also we, in Bramley, we trade the data durability for fast IO. Uh, for example, uh, for local functions, we uh, they can use a shared memory based object store to enable zero copy data sharing. Now we also pro, we also allow direct data exchange between the remote functions uh, without going through a remote storage. We have evaluated Fairmony on the EC2 cluster, uh, and we include four service platforms as uh, baselines. The first is Cloudburst. Cloudburst is a lightweight and performance service platform. Uh, actually, Fairmony is built atop Cloudburst. And another three as long as Kinis, uh, Lambda and Stack Functions, and Azure Dual Functions. And we first show a micro benchmark that compares the interaction latency of all the service platforms. Here we include three common interaction patterns the function chain, 
the parallel invocations and assembly invocation, the later two is like the fan out and fan in. For fan out and fan in, we vary the degree of the, from the two to 16. But from the finger, we can see that um, the, our system firmly can consistently achieve the best performance. In particular, um, it takes only about 40 microseconds to locally invoke a function. Uh, all, all, this, uh, all the other experiments conducted in after the warm up, um, and the, the overhead is uh, 10 times lower than the covers. We also evaluate the map reduce um, as a case study. Uh, as we have introduced before, uh, our environment in our system, we can easily enable the map reduce backed by the dynamic group printing. So we actually build a map reduce framework, a tough family. We call our framework family MR. We compare family MR with Pyram, which is uh, built, which which, are, which is built atop Lambda and can enable large scale math operation. And thanks to the uh, efficient support of family, the system we build can only need about 500 lines of code. Well, it can take uh, 6,000 lines of code of Pyram to running large scale map atop Lambda. In addition, um, mean family allow the users, uh, it, it can relieve users from handling data shuffle. We also compare the performance of family MR and param. Here, our, uh, we, we, we shuffle the 10 gigabytes in the metadata in a terrace application. And the number in this finger indicates the uh, interaction overhead and for Pyron, the interaction overhead is further break down into the function invocation and the, uh, the, the latency of exchanging into media data. And we can see that family MR only incurs um, sub-second overhead to shuffling 10 gigabytes data, and which is significantly of performing the Pyron. Um, and the credit is actually to the underlying uh, service platform. That is, compared with Lambda, our system, Ferromany, can, uh, can not only simplify the development of the MapReduce framework, but also deliver the high performance. Well, it's not the case for Lambda. That is, uh, for, uh, for Lambda, it uh, may, uh, building a framework or building a MapReduce framework on top Lambda not only need to take, need, needs more engineering effort, but also can suffer from limited uh, uh, unsatisfactory performance. Okay, uh, and here is the summary. Mm, uh, we have described the ceremony, which is the low latency service platform and can enable the data-centric function orchestration. It can ensure high uh, rich expressiveness. It can allow us to express a rich side of workflow patterns. It can also ensure high usability. User uh, is still need to separately handle the data exchange. We, we, we can do it using a unified interface. Um, it can also be applicable to both latency critical and data intensive applications. We have open source ceremony. Uh, welcome to access our GitHub repo via the left QR code. Um, finally, here's the ad um, in the job market right now. So uh, please feel free to reach out if there's a potential positions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to answer any question regarding this project. I wonder like how to control the granularity of the data buckets. For example, some functions, they might generate a lot of data and which corresponding to a large data bucket, while the others might generate very few. Like how do you balance the granularity and control so that they can like if it for efficient scheduling and the efficiency of the function orchestration? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the bucket is actually the uh, virtual abstraction. So actually, a bucket can um, can you know can are distributed across multiple worker nodes. So the actually you can see that if the bucket can have a large amount of data, and uh, the, the data is actually distributed across uh, multiple workers. So it, it, there's no uh, limitations on how much data each bucket can take. So during the during the, uh, the the scheduling or during the execution, we actually can track uh, the uh, like the uh, how much data in each worker node of the bucket has. That is, we can schedule more 
functions to the worker with most of the data cache. Yeah. 